What's up, y'all? Welcome to the Coach's Corner. I'm your host, Coach T Mac. Today, we're talking two gap defense and three four fundamentals with a former captain of the Notre Dame Fighting Irish defense and draft pick of the Baltimore Ravens and, shameless plug, my best friend, Capron Lewis Moore. If you want to catch these interviews live, I stream on Twitch every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday evening, and sometimes on Sundays. Make sure to like and subscribe to the channel to catch all my interview uploads. Now, cue the intro. Parts like the Red Sea, nobody touches them. No, it's, it's like when, when you hear that you made the 105, it's like Christmas morning. But my, if the ball comes in the B gap, i got to make that play. Right? So not everybody starts at ground zero equally. All right, uh, so like I said, Captain Lewis Moore of Notre Dame fame, uh, captain of the 2012 defense, uh, former draft pick of the Baltimore Ravens, and currently living the dream in uh, in Arizona, going hiking every day. Um, but little background, like I said, we went to high school together, so he had. Hey, Bill Hill, appreciate the host. Um, he had that, like, hey, you're really athletic, come off the edge kind of coaching style when we were in high school. And um, I think when he got to Notre Dame, his understanding of what it meant to be a defensive end in a couple of different looks and the responsibilities that came with it started to blossom and grow. Um, and so the big thing that I wanted to have him on to talk about is – the, the nuances of a 3-4 defense and the things that they were doing um, in Baltimore as well and kind of how that transition looked as far as complexity going from obviously the high school to the college and then the college to the pro level on the defensive side of the ball. So with that being said, Cap, is there anything I left out from an introductory standpoint that you would like to add? I wasn't no damn bum, man. What you talking about? <laughs> Bro, I had no. to take you to school every day. <laughs> no, because you my guy, man. No, that's cool, though. No, I ain't got nothing else to add, man. Just uh, ready, ready to have some fun, man. All right, so kind of before we talk just straight concepts and do all that, tell them about you graduate. Like, we'll fast forward through the recruiting because that's, that's a whole other stream for you. Yeah. Um, but – Graduate high school, get to South Bend, and you know your quote unquote red shirt year. Since Notre Dame's a little different about it, yeah. tell them what that tell them what that looked like. Well, the red shirt year was a lot of fun. Cause for most people that don't know, I was a skinny two hundred and twenty five pound guy coming out of high school out of Weatherford, and uh, you know to play at the next level, I couldn't couldn't be two hundred. 35 pounds playing a five technique in in uh, in the NCAA. I was going to get bammed on. So they basically what they wanted me to do is to uh, put on some muscle and uh, gain some weight. And uh, now I'm playing three sports like I did in high school and able to focus on one and football and get bigger and stronger really uh, helped me out a lot. So what were y'all um... – like you gained that freshman year, you gained. Correct me if I'm wrong. Sixty, yeah, or seventy pounds. It was more like fifty, yeah, fifty, sixty pounds. That, okay, that first year, and I just started just getting ballooned up. I hear you. I hear you. Yeah. And what did yeah, so. what did that what did that in season routine look like as compared to when you were obviously starting playing a lot? How what were you doing like on a Tuesday through Sunday routine? Kind of like Tuesday through Sunday was. Uh, you know, basically, you're practicing just like uh, scholarship players, but when you're registered, you're basically just not playing on on Saturday. So you're practicing, you're doing all that, you're all in the meetings. And so, basically, you're just running drills, and you're working on your, you know, you're working on your, you know, skills and stuff, but you're going to stop playing. But you get that extra year in the back end after your, which would be like your fifth year, you know, uh, academically, but you get that uh, that year you didn't play your freshman year, you get that year back. Yeah, and Shane Shane said uh, eating all day, that was your eating job. All day for sure. So, um, all right. So, all that being said, 
Now, let's. I want to look at because I found this interesting when you started talking. What like when we were talking before this and um, the uh, you know the concepts and the schemes that y'all were looking at and um, just how I thought they they would be more similar um, when you moved from South Bend to Notre Dame, but uh, the way you were talking, obviously it wasn't so. Let me share this real quick. So you, hey, so you can't see me right now? No, I, I, yeah, I can't. I can't see you at all. That's I weird. Just see, uh, I just see B talking. Sorry about that. No, I, 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 that's it's fine. I think it's, uh, I think it's your one of your Zoom settings. But I'm gonna do this anyway. So tell me if you can see this. Can you see oh, that? There you go. I can. I can see your video now. Yeah. Okay. All right. Sure. So this is the uh, this is the front that you told me about as far as like the two gap assignment front um, for when you were at Notre Dame, and which you were did y'all play strong in a week or did you play left and a right with your tackles? I think it was like left and right. Okay. So uh, do you do you have it pulled up on your Twitch or? Yeah, it's on. They can see what you can see as far as the huddle screen. I don't even see a huddle screen, bro. You don't see this like drawing right here? Oh, hold on, hold on. Oh, like a tight. The tight. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So tell me you're you said were you left or right? They're interchangeable. It didn't really matter. Okay. So I played, I played um, both sides. The only difference is, is just having whatever hand you have down. So hey. whatever, if you're on the, you know, if you're on that, uh, that left side, you would have, you know, some people taught it differently. Me and my defensive coach, we always had a little uh, disagreement of, you know, what hand had to be down. You know, some, he called, he coached where, uh, you would have the hand closest to the ball. Down. Right. I like to have, you know, me personally, I like to have, you know, either my dominant hand down. I feel you. So, and how, y'all, yeah. how did y'all, like it for this formation, forget what I called it, but in this pro formation, what, what did y'all declare strength to? The tight end, the receivers, or the back? Oh, you are going to... I gotta go way back. Yeah, I want to say I want to say we did it to the to the tight end. Okay. To the tight end, but it didn't really uh, it didn't really with our technique in the front. It was mo- we had a backside gap and we had a your must gap and your bonus gap. So, okay, so talk walk everybody through that must gap so, versus bonus gap, and that's I'm assuming that's where the na- the two gap name that you. You kind of called yeah, it, it comes from. That's how they. That's how they taught it, right? So, I'm just trying to. Uh, sorry, I'm trying to zoom in a little bit. Hold on, real quick, Shane. You can. What can you see? Can you see that, Shane? Real quick, Cap. My bad. Oh, you good? There. All right. Let me know if y'all can see the huddle now. Can you see the huddle cap? Mm-hmm. All right. There we go. Schmitty says we're good now. All right. So now walk us through the must uh, the must gap and the bonus gap. So let's say uh, let's say we're gonna run uh, like a stretch to stretch to uh, you know offensive right or left right. Mm-hmm. So. So we just run a simple zone. So, you know, obviously, you know, your offensive line takes your stab, you know, you're running to the right. So if I'm that left tackle and um, and I got play side and I got, I had play side to me. Oh, dude, I gotta, I mean, this is back in 2012. I want to say your, your play side, your front side gap was your must gap. But I think the backside gap was uh, – no, that wouldn't make sense. I had to play uh, 
I had to play the backside guy. So you're and playing then, if you're if you're here if you're this tackle, yep, and they're and running stretch. You're gonna play B gap. I was playing B to A. I was B, to B to A. a. So yeah. you're gonna you're trying you're you're a must to B to try and redirect the play and then squeeze to A if the opportunity presents itself. No, I wasn't. No, I'm not really squeezing to A. I would. No, I'm just I'm knocking I'm knocking the tackle back. But my if the ball comes in the B gap, I gotta make that play. Okay. I gotta so, make that play. So but where does the to the C gap? Oh, so your what? go your bonus gap is outside, not inside. Yeah. Gotcha. For sure. Okay. And I want I want to say that was uh, I'm like ninety percent sure that was it. Because I remember, yeah, you always had we had a bonus side, we had a must gap and our bonus gap. And I want to say the our must gap was that back side. I got you. We were two gapping, and that and that Mike and that Will was great. And so every, I mean, you're just playing, you're playing gap assignment football. Um, and then what were y'all, you know, obviously you're not a DB, but, and not to put you on the spot for detail and complexity, but what was your, what was y'all's primary coverage on the back end um, in this base look? I want to say it was, uh, We had a lot of we had our our base look was we called it mom it was like a it was like stack it was like stack two or stack three okay like it was a, it was a it was a version of cover two though so yeah version of cover two and cover three gotcha so probably I would assume it's got some palms foundation and that you know that four read or you know two read whatever people want to call it especially y'all uh, saw more y'all saw more pro style offenses than than anything wouldn't you say. What in college? Yes. Uh, yeah, man. Because uh, when we played, uh, you know, the Stanford when the Harbaugh was there, Andrew Luck, you know, the, they had the two tight fullback, mm -hmm. you know, running running down your throat type thing. Exactly. And um, who was in Michigan State? You know, they're always known to have a good running back. Le'Veon Bell played against him, and they was you know kind of like the same thing: two back, fullback. You know, boss runs. Okay, so my boss terminology and your boss terminology, I would almost guarantee are going to be different. What, um, when you say boss runs, what are you talking there? So I'm talking about maybe like, a, you know, like a full, like a two, like maybe like a two, what's oh, maybe like 22, maybe like outside like kind of like stretch kind of okay you know what I'm talking about maybe pulling a lineman okay what do but you call a bigger you're that's more of like personnel style runs and like more downhill yeah, leads than I zone do more style. personnel style runs instead of like you know I wasn't real too good about the whole uh calling you know boss right toss right I feel 22 you. hey as a detailer for me hey I want to know what they're running out of 12 22 right you know, personnel. Press, separate, run the yeah. line of scrimmage. For sure. Okay. And, don't, and if you're a three technique, don't get reached. <laughs> don't get reached. Don't get don't get reached, bro. All right. So uh, there's the base look. Um, and obviously, this defense worked. I got to be a. I got to attend at least six of those victories that year. Um, and also, too, man, we had great players, man. At the end. Hundred percent. I mean, how many? Players. Think of from that team, from that twenty twelve defense. How many guys got drafted? Not necessarily in that next draft, but just overall. Oh, we had a lot of people, man. Uh, you know, obviously, man, Titeo, Trent Shimbo, Lewis Nick, Stephon Tuitt, Marcel, Kavari Russell, uh, Jamor Slaughter. Um, yeah, we had we had dogs, man. We had we had a good team. Was was far was Matthias still there? Matthias was there. Yeah, Matthias Bennett Jackson. That's when uh that's when Bennett was a wide receiver, bro. And uh, he moved to the DV. And all he did was all he did was flourish, man. Yeah, for sure. All he did was flourish. All right, so there's your base defense. You know the complexities come with I would assume week to week game planning things of that nature, but now. The two gap slide. 
when you because I I remember y'all being, you know, a th- base three four, but you started talking about your ability to become an even front and how that worked, and what you see on the screen right here was my interpretation of you know kind of our conversation uh, earlier and how I interpreted some of the things that you were describing, and if it's totally wrong, tell me, but. Walk us through how this changes your responsibilities and what your your job becomes if y'all jump into this. If we if we reduce down, mm-hmm. all right. I can't see. Uh, you got your huddle up again. Yeah. Did you not see me change? Right there uh, with the uh, arrows. You can't see the arrows. I can see it now. Okay. Yeah. So now, um, this was uh, this was back when you know Bob Diaco. This is this is back when he was our D coordinator. So basically, it was just like wherever, uh, you know, wherever we had a cat call. So a cat was kind of like our rush in, kind of like a quick guy. That's what uh that's what like Darius played. Right. So we would uh if we wanted to go down to the reduced front, he would give a cat call, cat right or cat left call. And basically what it would do is it would slide it would slide our our line from a head up three down look to now to a four down look. Okay, so, so are you moving up. are you moving two gaps? Are you moving one gap? How do you, you and then move, you move a whole technique so that, that three tech that head up four on that left. Mm-hmm. So I'm going from the R, I'm going from, you know, R right to R left, offensive right to offensive left, right? Right. So, so you're going from a head up four, a true four, are you going to, to a three? Okay. And that nose is going from a head up to a shade, and that four, head up four is going to a five. Okay. And that, and that rush in is going to go kind of play like a loose five. I got you. So you're not necessarily trying to set a hard edge to the tight end, because the backer still has edge set responsibility over here to the offensive left. You said what? So this this tackle's going from a four to a five. He's not going – is he coming all the way out? Or is no, he just playing this he's – going, He's going to a four to a five. Okay. And that outside backer – and I'm, I'm pretty sure that outside backer, that which would be that dog, that other backer, mm-hmm. is, down, is down outside for support. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So he's triggering early to set edge. I got yeah, you. For sure. Okay. And so then it really doesn't it doesn't necessarily change a ton of responsibilities. You're just doing similar now, things from a Now, yeah, yeah. So now remember that bus gap I had and that bonus gap. That C gap. I'm not worried about the bonus gap now cuz I'm already gapped up now. Exactly. You got your gap. I got you. So so now that 3 technique has that B gap, that nose has that backside shade on that A gap and now that and that other end that went from a four to a five has that C gap. Okay. So I got to, you brought him up, but uh, we got a guy in chat that he, he is, he's an Aussie, but uh, he's born and raised South, uh, Southern Australia, but he's a huge Notre Dame fan. And What's his, name? his, his, I just know him as Heath. He's a coach. He's an American football coach down in Australia. What's um, up, Heath? But he's a huge Notre Dame fan, and one of the first questions he had when I said that you might be coming to talk ball was he wanted to hear about playing for Diaco. So I need I need at least I need at least one relatively family friendly Diaco story before we move on. Uh, man, I got a lot for you, man. That that dude. I, just know that he's just the most interesting person in the world, man. He's just, he's always well, you know, well-groomed, dressed to the T, but he's, him and his stories, man, he's just, he's just all over the place. So, I mean, there's been a, there's been a lot of times where he just kind of, you know, he's just, he's just real intense and he just thinks that you just gotta, you know, Whenever you're brushing your teeth, you gotta like brush your teeth like the best in the best in the world. Like, right. You gotta be the best person to brush your teeth at that given uh, time and moment. So he's just a real intense guy. Man. I got you. 
All right. So there it is. That's the the Notre Dame portion of like base defense and, and assignment football and whatnot. Um, before we jump into the Raven stuff, most memorable game from your Notre Dame career. Most memorable game. Man, honestly, bro, I would have to say is that that Wake Forest game my senior night where uh it's cuz I was there, I know. I appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, he was there. He was there and uh I think it was the fact that uh your alma mater actually if you remember helped us out that night. Oh yeah, K-State, baby, you're and, welcome. And with, the, with the big upset of K-State because uh I think cuz were they number 1? No, they were number 2. They were number two. We were number three. I think we we're number three. It went. It went. No, K State was number one. It went K State, Oregon, Notre Dame, and, and so Oregon lost. and Oregon, Oregon lost Dillard. to Stanford in overtime, and yes, so that's yes, how that's Bama got Dillard. back in with the one loss. And we got back in, and with us, we were number three. So that whole night, and we won handily. Wait for us. And like, yeah, I think Jonas was, Jonas sealed that game like second possession of the third quarter with like a sixty yard touchdown. Yeah, and they're like, did. well, all right. He did, and uh, I just remember that that whole after that game, we kind of knew like, hey, you know, it's real now. It's out. SC loss. So there's and this was the old BCS thing. Yeah. Too. So we were like, there's absolutely no way we're not number one. Exactly. You know, and and after, I think that feeling, and you know, after seeing the ESPN, the projected rankings, I, I, I know you remember we went out that night, and it was, uh, it was, it was I was the lit. most popular guy in South Bend. Yeah, it was, it was pretty lit, man. It was pretty lit. So that was, that was probably, that's probably one of the top moments of my career. Man. Yeah, I mean, at, the one and, in uh, my short, in my short football fan only career, it was, it was a top three experience. That was fun, man. It was great. It was super great, man. All right, so now, fast forward. You're in Baltimore, pro defense. Still kind of what I gather, kind of an odd front. A lot of similarities. Um, but a little bit different. Who's the DC when you're in when you get to Baltimore? It was Dean Pease. Okay. Dean Pease. He uh, he was there for he. I don't know. He's been coaching for a long time. He just was recently with the Tennessee Titans. Uh, so this past year. Now, they, before we get into the before we get into the oh. scheme, how was he different from Diaco? Uh, it was a lot more complicated, actually. Um, you know, different terminology, different. You know, different ways. Um, you know, I wouldn't say you had a little bit more flexibility, but it was just it was just ter- different terminologies and like uh, the scheme. The scheme was pretty difficult at first to learn. Okay, so what base drawing is? I tried to get as close to what you were describing on this four three under. Is there? Does this look similar to what you were trying to describe? Or do I need to change something? And then if it is, walk us uh, through. It was, it was just an underlook. So if we're going to the tight end, we're going to have an end as a five technique. And that you're yeah, talking yeah, this yeah. dude. No, that's uh no. You still have your Sam there. Your Sam, your Sam's on the. So he's Sam gonna be, be true like gapped up. Tight end. Yeah. Okay. But that would be. That, and then your that shade, eight. shade. And what is this guy doing? Is he's he a, he's like a loose five? Yeah, loose so, five. All right, loose five. Yeah. All right. So now walk us through your responsibilities. This is basically it was just a gap. It was just it was kind of relatively simple. Gapped up. You got uh your mic. I think your mic was in the thirty. Your wheels in the twenty. And uh, yeah, you got your three. You're your open side. You got your open side in. You got your uh, three technique. And uh, you know your shade. And then you got your five and your Sam right there. And you're again all playing with twist and stunt varying, but you're all just playing gap assignment football 
Now, right. would your responsibilities vary from this set as far as if you're this, if you're this, you know, offensive right side tackle? Are you playing predominantly B gap, or are y'all going to slant and try and squeeze everything uh, to playing, get you're you? You're playing C gap. I mean you're C gap. gap you're playing style C gap right there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Mike's playing that B gap, and that nose is staying stout in that shade right there. Okay. So, so we, we, like for this defense to work, you know, uh, back when you know we had a Hol- Nada, you know, and uh, freaks, freaks, you know, <laughs> Haloti, Ray Lewis, right there, you know, Suggs. And, uh, you know, you can understand why Baltimore had a pretty solid defensive line for a lot of years. And so one question I do have about, like, tackle play in this situation, whether it is you're more head up four or you're playing a five, if you if your guard pulls, are you chasing? What it, Like, what's the coaching point for that situation? Which which guard uh which guard are we uh so you if you're this five tech tackle and this guard right here pulls what's your your yeah, obviously I mean yeah yeah this tackle pulls for whatever reason you're expecting he, this down he huh what's he pulling to like well he's a if he's an unco- if he's pulling this way or if he's trying to loop stretch oh, how yeah, are you yeah. reacting or even if you're this tackle and this guard pulls. How, what's your what's your technique or what's the coaching point on if your guard or your lineman pulls in front of you? Are you chasing? Line. Are you squeezing? So, so let's do this. So uh, you want to you want to start with the five first? Or yeah, start we'll start the, here. Start with the five first. So if that so if that ta- if this tackle that I'm covered on, if he pulls what outside like a little little yeah. U block. Yeah, I'm going to I'm going to punch. I'm going to take my step and I'm going to punch through I'm going to punch through that tight end cuz that tight end is going to try to down block you, right? Right. So, you know, I would try to look at some some guys would try to give some type of tail, you know, uh the 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 uh you know, that tight end might be heavy on his hand, the little tackle light, a little lighter on his stance. Right. So he can kind of pull out quick. But what I would, like I said, what I would do is I try to get a tail, and then I would just uh, attack through, attack through that tight end shoulder, and if ball once ball clears my gap or ball is gone, then you chase. So you're really just stonewalling this tight end as much as possible yeah. and trying to play pursuit down the line of scrimmage. Yeah, I got you. Okay, so now well, that's going to happen pretty quick. Right, and so now move to the other side. If you're this four eye. Uh, well, if you're the three now, we're I'm talking. sorry. If you're, yeah, he's sorry. He should be true three. Yeah, true three. Um, so if he's there, and this guard pulls to run just a straight counter or power scheme, you're, you're, are you looking for the backside, the back block from the center, or yeah, you would, you would, you would, uh, you would hit that black, the back block for the center, but that's usually like a like a pretty fast happening play. Mm-hmm. So what you want to do is is hit the center, you know, because you can't jump, you can't go over too far because if you jump out that gap, that fullback, that running back can cut back yeah. and gash you, and then uh, and then your coach is not happy at all. Then you're fired. Then you're then you're fired. <laughs> so yeah, if that center is blocking back on you, you want to hit the center. Um, you know, once ball is not in your gap or once ball can't go to your gap, then you want to chase and pursue. But I've been in different schemes where if that happens, I've been in I've been in a scheme where if that happens, you have the freedom to, you know, cross over with the nose too. Just okay. not in this game and the Ravens we couldn't do that. And no, where no. where was that at? Where you had uh, that I freedom? Know Jack, when I was in Jacksonville, okay. they had a couple of plays where, you know, if you saw that guard and you know, in certain calls, you had the freedom to. I got you. To okay. Go, to cross over, cross face. So, now the the interesting note, and I think that I think a lot of people just automatically assume this about the NFL, but um, the man free, lots of blitzing. Um, oh yeah. How how much more complex were the professional like? Concepts of blitzing versus what y'all did when you were at Notre Dame. 
I feel like when you blitz in, like blitz in college, you're just kind of like, you go here and just a. Hey, if it happens, it happens. <laughs> if it doesn't, it doesn't. Okay. But now when you blitz here, when like I feel like in the league when you blitz, it's like, hey, you know, you're hitting this gap, but if this slides this way, then you got to do this, or you know, if you see this look while you're blitzing, then you got to do this because so it can kind of change. Right. It's not or, just a pin your ears back and run at the quarterback type thing. Yeah. And also, there's some calls, you know, in college where you call them like live calls where they can switch with any type of, you know, uh, you can have a receiver motion or something like that. It can it can switch over. It can switch the call from, you know, blitzing from the left side or to the right side. So and there was more calls like that where you had it was based on movement. I got you. And then um, the. The back end, as far as coverages, you know the split cover, the split safety coverages, and you know combos. We kind of t- on stream, we kind of talked to combo coverages on Monday. Um, not to sit here and pretend that like you know I know NFL level coverages, but how would you say that y'all were predominantly man free or predominantly some sort of mixed zone or split coverage? I think we were we were mixed with splits. Uh... I feel like we were mixed uh, with some split safety coverage. I didn't really, and I know I, I hate to admit this, but <laughs> I did, like my first two years of the league, I was just focused on, you know, for the guys that are listening. Like, so I'm in the room. I'm only focusing on the E, the T, the N, and the T, the S are doing. I'm not looking at nothing about what the damn safety's doing, what the wheel backer's doing. I was just like, yo, let me just. Let me just focus on. and uh, But now, like, you know, uh, my third and fourth years, I, I kind of started understanding the back end a little bit better. You know, I'm still not, obviously not great on it. But uh, I did understand a little bit more of it, though. But I know with the, um, with our, with our, uh, with our coordinator, he was, uh, there was, a, there was some, there was some split safety coverage. Uh, there was also, he liked to run man, cover one a lot, too. And who was who was a free safety when you were in Baltimore? Uh, I played with a few, man. Uh, Eric Weddle. Uh, we- okay, Weddle, Weddle's the one I was thinking uh, of that Michael I couldn't remember. Huff. Eric there, Weddle's kind of a uh, dude. Yeah, he was. Tony Jefferson was there. Um, He's Matt still there, Hebert. isn't he? Uh, no, he got released. Oh, okay. Yeah. Rip, my bad. They're all, yeah, they're all great dudes over there, man. Yeah, definitely all great dudes over there. All right, well, conceptually, that's all I got. Um, let me yeah. see if anybody, if y'all have any like football specific Notre Dame Rave or Ravens questions um, before before we kind of transition away from football. Do y'all have any questions? Anybody got anything they want to ask that's a appropriate and b relevant? <laughs> 